In the meantime, the U.S. looks for intelligence to confirm that Iran helped Hamas plan these attacks on Israel, as the Wall Street Journal reported several days ago. House Republicans say that the U.S. special envoy to Iran, quote, may have had a compromising tie to the Iranian regime. Robert Malley has already been suspended from his position as the FBI investigates him and whether or not he mishandled classified information. Listen to what he said about Hamas more than a decade ago. There's so much misinformation about them. I mean, I, 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 I speak to them, my, and my colleagues speak to them. Now, we may disagree with them, but they have their own rationality. That's the one thing to understand. These are not, none of them are crazies. They may do things that we consider to, to belong to a different realm of rationality, but within their own system, it's often very logical. Okay. Uh, let's bring in House <clears throat> Foreign Affairs Committee Chairman, Texas Congressman Michael McCall, also on the Homeland Security Committee. Congressman, thank you. So um, this individual, Thanks, Malley, uh, his security violations were so serious that he was suspended without pay, and his security clearances were suspended as well, but he was this administration's Iran envoy for a time. How concerning is this? That's very concerning. He's a special envoy uh, for Iran. He is the, the principal uh, architect, the negotiator on the Iran deal uh, to resurrect the Iran deal. And the concern is that uh, we tried to get him before my committee to testify, to brief us on Iran, uh, and he was basically AWOL. And then we found out that he was suspended without pay because he had uh, problems with his uh, security clearance. He had compromised classified information uh, we think with Iran, and now there's a wider investigation, you know, into this. I, I, you know, you can't make this stuff up, Martha. I mean, between that and the six billion dollars they've pledged to put into Iran, the largest state sponsor of terror, all in the name of getting another JCPOA deal done, uh, it's not acceptable to House Republicans. Yeah, there's there's a lot of weird things going on here. I mean, why don't you know they even when, when they unfroze the six billion dollars and they traded five for five hostages, U.S. American. Um, they said, yeah, but we can freeze that money at any time, right? So now every single day they bend over backwards to say that nobody has used a penny of the money, and yet when asked point blank, why don't you just refreeze that money again? They don't want to. They don't want to say that they are going to do that. And they also don't want to say that they have any evidence that there's any link between Iran and this action. So I think a lot of Americans want to know why, Congressman. Of course. I mean, you know, this is a, a, a money transfer from South Korea to Doha. And, and we're told that it's only for humanitarian purposes and that somehow we're going to trust Doha to manage the money so it's only for humanitarian purposes. The president of Iran came out himself and said, I'm going to use the money any way I want to. And so now you're seeing the White House starting to crawfish back from the $6 billion. It just came out from John Kirby that they're going to, they're going to stop the flow or stop the payments from coming in. But I don't want to see it as a temporary measure. I want to see it as a permanent measure. Remember, Iran has financed Hamas. They gave you know $150 million to them just last year. They give them the rockets that they fire into Israel. And the idea that they're not complicit with this or have fingerprints is absolutely insane. And if we're going to infuse $6 billion to the largest state sponsor of terror, my God. Well, the, what I mean, a, what that, that deal always policy. had big question marks around it for all of us. It just didn't feel like a, like a fair, well-negotiated arrangement. And now the fact that they're defending these elements of it and they won't have a tie of evidence, say there's no evidence linking Iran to this attack when Iran supports 93 percent of Hamas's um, funding. It's, it's just there, there's more to this story and we're going to continue to dig into it. Quick question for you on this day of resistance tomorrow, this call for global jihad from the Homeland mm -hmm. Security Perspective Committee. Um, should Americans be concerned about tomorrow? Well, they should. I think you're going to see protests uh, all over the country. Uh, what I'm most concerned about, I'm, I'm the one that gets the funding to protect the synagogues from radical jihadists. I'm most concerned about the synagogues uh, out there. I think they are a target, uh, uh, primarily from a Homeland Security standpoint. Um, and, you know, what I, what I don't like, your previous panel talked about this false narrative. It's only been days since all these children were massacred, and now suddenly 
uh, Hamas has turned into the victim and Israel's a perpetrator. And that's what I don't like. Michael McCall, uh, Chairman, thank you very much. Always good to have you, you with us. Uh, and we will watch thank what you. unfolds tomorrow. We hope everyone in America is safe and uh, we will be here throughout the day to cover it. Thank you very much, sir. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.